Repeat after me. You gotta squirt gas to haul ass. Now, as the Miata sits, as it is, it's running a stock fuel pump, stock fuel lines, stock fuel filter, stock fuel rail. Basically, the only thing we upgraded for the turbo kit was the injectors. And now we're basically at the limit of our stock fuel pump. So I figured that's a pretty good excuse to throw some more money into the pit and upgrade our whole fuel system. Will all these upgrades be worth the money they cost and the time they require to install? I don't know. I think it's going to take a lot of time to install all these parts, but I think they'll be worth it. Let's find out. Today is a huge day. Why, you ask? Well, because today is the day that I get to announce that Money Pit is officially sponsored by eBay Motors for the entire next season. And that means we're getting a new car. We've come a seriously long way from cleaning stains in my driveway to where we are today, and it is all because of you guys. So thank you. And I figure news like this, well, it requires some celebrating. So let's celebrate. sponsor for Money Pit. That's why I can't wait to get started working on the new car. But the next season doesn't start until June 9th, so you gotta stay tuned. In the meantime, hit the link in the description below to check out eBay Motors and let us know in the comments what you think the next car is. Now the engine bay on the Miata has been coming along pretty nicely. We've spent a lot of time in here and done a lot of things. Intake manifold, cooling system, turbo kit. And of course the turbo crams more air into your engine, which means you need more fuel. And like I said, we did upgrade the fuel injectors and that's fine and dandy to a certain power point. And we've kind of reached our limit. And the last time we went to the dyno, we saw that limit. We're making about 260 wheel horsepower and above 6,000 RPMs, we started to see our air fuel ratios start to slightly lean out, even though we were asking them to stay nice and rich. Now, generally speaking, what that means is that you're maxing out some component in your fuel system. For us, that is the fuel pump in my opinion, but I bought a bunch of parts to replace along with the fuel pump. So we're going to make this fuel system very sick today. Let's take a look at the pile of parts that I've put together. All right. So starting at the tank and moving forward, here's what we've got for a new fuel pump. I've got an AEM 340 liter per hour E85 compatible fuel pump. This thing should flow plenty of fuel and do just the job we need in terms of fuel flow out of the tank of the Miata. Now to wire this thing up, I've got Detchworks uh, fuel pump wiring kit. It's basically a relay kit. And we're going to use this to wire our new fuel pump up. We do that because bigger fuel pumps draw more power and your stock wiring can't necessarily handle it. So we'll use that for that. Then we've got some DIY AN lines. We're gonna figure out how to put AN lines together today. So that'll be exciting. Then moving on from there, we've got two fuel filters from Radium. I've got a hundred micron filter here. That'll be our first filter. Then our second filter is 10 microns, which is a finer filtration. Then up at the rail end of things, we've got a fresh new Radium rail. Pretty sick, made out of aluminum, looks awesome, and is built to use a bunch of cool Radium stuff, like a fuel pressure regulator, adjustable so we can regulate our fuel pressure and a fuel pulse damper to keep the flow to all of our injectors nice and smooth all the time. And we've also got a cute little fuel pressure gauge because who doesn't want a gauge under the hood? And that's about it. It's kind of a lot of things. It's a whole system. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of steps to this. I don't think any of it's going to be too terribly hard, but boy, it's going to be kind of time consuming and we're probably going to get some fuel on us. So with that said, I reckon we should get cracking. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start at the tank and start working on our fuel pump. So the first thing I need to do is remove the access panel from the top of the tank. All right, before I go popping any lines off of the uh, fuel pump sender area, I need to get as much fuel out of those lines as I can. 
to avoid squirting it all over myself and everything. So uh, I've got the fuel pump disconnected. I'm just gonna start the car and let it run until it dies, if it even starts, uh, just to use up fuel that's in the lines. All right, that should have done a pretty good job of removing fuel from our feed lines. I'm still gonna have some in the lines, certainly, so still gotta be careful and try to catch that stuff. Fuel's pretty corrosive. It will eat concrete coating, case in point. Okay, I got a drip tray under the car. I've got my eyeball protection on. I'm just gonna pop off the uh, feed line from the fuel pump and let the fuel that's in the line drain out. All right, so the fuel mostly out of the lines. Now I'm gonna disconnect them here at the access panel. And it would be really easy for me to get confused as to which one of these identical rubber hoses is the feed and the return. So I'm just gonna put a yellow mark on one so I know where it came from, just to keep my brain straight. Okay, no drama there, that's great. Now, it's time to find out if we can fit this thing out of here. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. I'm sure when they made the roll bar, they were thinking about that. Oh my God. Out of my way. And just as easy as that, it's out. Uh, really not that big of a deal. So oh, I am a little covered in fuel now. Saddle up, set your spurs on down. Donuts made the sickest hat in town. License, real tree, camo on your head. Yeah, that's what I said. Sing it. C A M O H A T. Baddest hat that you can't see. C A M O H A T. Made for you and me. So now you can represent your favorite automotive brand when you're on the road, on the lake, or up in that blind. Only available at donutmedia.com. Get you one. Whether you're fixing cars or in the woods, donuts got you looking good in your C-A-M-O-H-A-T. Blend in and stand out in donut country. Okay, before we go slamming our new pump in, I have to modify it. Which I know seems a little weird, but this is a nice pump. It uh, flows a lot. It's relatively quiet, relatively affordable. It's the same pump that I have in the 240. And a long time ago, we did an episode of me trying to figure out why that thing wasn't running. And the reason it wasn't running was because the fuel feed line had just popped off of the fuel pump. As far as I could tell, the reason that that happened was because this fuel pump, unlike many others, this is just straight here. There's no barb, there's no flange, there's no nothing to mechanically lock your fuel line on. So I'm gonna cut just a very light groove or two into uh, the outlet here of the fuel pump uh, just to make sure that my hose never pops off like it did over there. Okay, now it may not look like much, man, that's because it's not, but that little tiny notch is gonna help keep my fuel feed line on the pump, which means I'm not gonna have to get back in there and put it back on. So these spring clamps can be tricky to get to with just regular pliers sometimes. So when they are, there are these, and these are fantastic. They grab both sides, they lock in place, and they let you actually grip these kind of clamps. All right, fuel pump is in its bracket with our nice green sock on, getting this stuff tightened up, and then this is basically ready to go back in the car, except that I have to connect the pigtail for the new fuel pump to the connector from the old fuel pump. Now this is the part that hangs me up the most. I, you know, you rewire all this stuff, but you're still kind of left with using the factory bulkhead connector that goes from the inside of the tank to the outside. My concern here is that these wires would be too small, but they do usually make the in-tank wires pretty beefy, so we're gonna be okay. Factory fresh. 
Now, with one little clicky, this thing's basically ready to go back in, except I still gotta put this back on. I'll do that real quick. And then, we can dump in our new fuel pump, and we're off to the races. All right, so we got a new fuel pump in our tank. That's awesome. Now we're gonna work on wiring it up using that Dutchworks fuel pump wiring kit that I was talking about. We're basically just gonna be adding a little circuit with a relay to give all of the power that this fuel pump wants to it. So we've just got a nice little power distribution block there that we'll be able to tap into for the main power for the fuel pump on this new relay that we're gonna put in. Then we'll trigger the relay with the stock fuel pump wiring. So when the car tells the fuel pump to turn on, it'll actually be telling our relay to turn on, which will allow power to come from this strip here to our fuel pump. Sick. Okay, with our fuel pump relay wired up, now it's time to work on our new fancy fuel lines and filter. So that's why I'm underneath the car. Uh, so this is the factory fuel filter right here. I'm gonna switch over to AN lines down here where these rubber lines are. I'm also probably gonna replace this fuel filter with at least one of the fuel filters we have. Okay, so we've got our old fuel filter and the rubber hoses that connected it to our fuel lines out of the way. Uh, so now I'm gonna put in some AN lines. And that's pretty cool, but it can be kind of tricky to go from your factory hard lines to AN lines. I mean, how do you do it? The best way to do it, I've got these little adapters. I got these from Fab9. Uh, they sell a lot of Miata stuff. And so they carry these from Vibrant. These are a 5 16th hard line to a dash 6AN adapter. And what do you know, the Miata's fuel lines are 5 16ths. So I'm basically gonna use a little tube cutter to cut the, uh, the flares off of my stock hard lines. And then I'll be able to use these compression fittings to screw onto the hard lines and give myself a dash six AN connection for all my new lines and fittings. Uh, so that'll be great. And the reason, again, that I wanna replace these old rubber hoses is that I wanna be able to run E85 in the future. Uh, so everything from here forward will be either metal hardline or the uh, hose that I'm using with the dash AN fittings, which is a PTFE, uh, which is corrosion resistant for alcohol, E85, all that stuff. So it'll be great. Okay, we've got our first fuel filter roughly mounted in place. Uh, now all we gotta do is get some lines connected to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do in order to start making this AN line is cut a fresh new end off of this hose. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do this. They sell big cutters, you know, and those are okay, but they can dull and, uh, you know, you don't really get any other use out of them. But you can also just use a cutoff wheel, which is what I'm gonna use. So you wanna put a little tape over the uh, braided line where you wanna cut it. And that tape's gonna help keep the uh, braiding from fraying when you cut it. Not bad. So that is not frayed. It's nice and circular still. It didn't get all wonkered out. Now I'm gonna clean up the tubing in there with my deburring tool. Then, well we gotta blow this thing out. I gotta go with the air hose. This ultimately is gonna transport fuel to your engine. And you don't want that debris going through your injectors, really. Your engine would eat it up just fine. Okay, so there we've got a nice square start. So now we're gonna push this out a little bit and get our fitting. Putting a 90 on this end. So take apart the hose end. Just gotta slip this unit over. Now we gotta bend and kind of pry that uh, braiding away from the tubing so we can get our little compression fitting in between the tubing and the braiding. Because you can see, I don't know if I've said this, but this is uh, basically a nylon tubing inside of steel braiding and then whatever this cloth braiding or whatever braiding is on the outside. So we're just gonna pry it back, like so. Looks like it came with a tool for putting these in rather than my hammer. 
So let's see if oh, I might still want the hammer. Yeah, there we go. And there you can see the tubing comes all the way to the end and meets up with that collar at the front. Now we take our 90, plop her in like so, run this guy up, and it's never a bad idea to put a little lube on aluminum threads. This is not a twist cap, what am I doing? Uh, and fittings basically are all standard, so you can use standard wrenches, but you can also damage your fittings with these. Crescent wrenches also work. You can just put some tape over the face if you're worried about damaging the fittings. I, however, not too worried. All right, so now I've got my line from the first filter up to the second filter completed. The routing looks good, it's nice and tight to the body. No concerns about it, you know, hitting the ground while I'm driving or anything like that. So I think this looks good. All right, so now it's time to start putting together our fuel rail assembly. Now, obviously we've got the fuel rail, but there's a few pieces that are gonna go on it. Uh, we've got some kit here from Radium and it all should play together really nicely because that's what they made it to do. Uh, so we've got a fuel pressure regulator, adjustable, and that's gonna go at the end of the fuel rail. And we'll also have a little fuel pressure gauge sticking off of it so we can see our fuel pressure under the hood. And then we've got this fuel pulse damper. Uh, inside the fuel rail at higher RPMs, the fuel can start pulsing and then that kind of affects the way it comes through your injectors. So this fuel pulse damper is almost like a shock absorber for your fuel rail and it keeps your fuel pressure nice and steady and even throughout without any pulsing. Now that our new rail setup is ready, we're gonna take off this ugly old stock rail. So these are the injectors that we installed when we did the turbo kit. They're fuel injector clinic uh, 660s, if I recall correctly. Uh, we're sticking with them for now, but when the day comes that we're trying to make big power on E85, we might need to upgrade to a larger injector. All right, our new rail is in and it looks pretty sick. So now all we need to do to finish this whole project up is get a line made that goes from our second filter into the rail and then a line that goes from the fuel pressure regulator's return side and back to our return line. And so that's not that much left. I think we can do it. With that, our last fuel line is complete. Now we just gotta put it on. And then it's pretty much time to fire this thing up. All right, last step, I almost forgot. We gotta run some vacuum lines to our new bits. Uh, the fuel pressure regulator needs to see engine vacuum and or boost, uh, specifically so that it can increase fuel pressure. Uh, when we're in boost, and so that it can decrease fuel pressure when we're in vacuum. And basically the reason it does that is because when you're in vacuum, the vacuum in the engine effectively sucks the fuel out of your injectors. And when you're in boost, the boost in your engine effectively fights the fuel from coming out of the injectors. So a rising rate fuel pressure regulator like this with a vacuum reference, basically its job is to keep the fuel pressure effectively at 43 and a half PSI, at least on this car, 43 and a half PSI. But the point is that in vacuum, it can be a little bit lower because of the added assist from the vacuum and it needs to be higher in boost because of the added resistance from the boost. And our new fuel pulse damper also needs to see vacuum. So I gotta tee those into the intake manifold and then final check, you know, put a wrench on everything and then Okay, moment of truth. 
What do you think? Likelihood of leaks? So I'm gonna turn the key on a few times to uh, turn on the fuel pump, prime it a few times to fill up our new lines, and uh, if we see no leaks, then we'll proceed to fire this thing up. Well, I can hear the fuel pump running. That's good news. That means our wiring must be okay. Uh, now, let's prime it one more time. Let's see if we've got any leaks. Dry. Dry, dry. Wow, wonderful stuff. And we're sitting at about 38 PSI fuel pressure. Well, that's great news. So, I think it's time to start this thing. Then it's gonna be time, while it's running, to adjust our base fuel pressure. That means we need to disconnect the vacuum from it and get it set at, like I said earlier, 43 and a half PSI. Don't ask me why it's 43 and a half PSI, but it is. But the point is that you need to adjust it without the vacuum on, because if you're adjusting with vacuum on, its pressure is gonna be lower than it would be without vacuum, like we talked about earlier with the whole vacuum and boost thing. So I'll pop off the vacuum line, start this thing up, and then we'll adjust our little knobby to about 43.5. And we'll keep an eye out for leaks. Wow. All right, leaks? No leaks. Okay, we're at 40. Okay, we're gonna call that 43 and a half. Uh, we're obviously aiming in between hash marks, so that's fine. Close enough, certainly. We'll plug our vacuum back in. And now watch what happens when I plug vacuum back in on the gauge. Fuel pressure drops drastically because the vacuum in the engine is helping pull fuel out of the injectors. So as we get on the gas pedal and head out of vacuum and towards atmospheric pressure, this gauge will come up to 43 and a half at atmospheric pressure. And then as we transition into boost, it'll creep up one PSI per PSI of boost. So at one PSI of boost, 44.5 PSI of fuel pressure, so on and so forth. And that just helps keep us squirting enough gas to keep hauling enough ass no matter how much boost we're throwing. So, wow, what a setup. Honestly, couldn't be happier. This looks sick. The car is not gonna lean out next time we're on the dyno. And now we've got a fuel system that can handle big power for when we choose to go down that road. Uh, but that's gonna do it for this week. This is a great install and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I hope you guys learned something like how to put together lines. It's really not that hard as long as you know what you're doing. And in my opinion, all this stuff has been worth it. It really wasn't that difficult, although it did take some time but look how sick it is. And it's such good stuff. It's a cool bit of kit. So I'm really pumped about it. I think this has been worth it. And uh, I hope you guys think the same thing. Let me know in the comments. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and Dona at Dona Media. See you guys next week.